Welcome back class. Today's lesson is about proportions and percentages. So we have learned how to solve percent problems by using the word is means equal and of means multiply, changing the percent to a decimal. Hopefully this makes sense. But there's another way in which we can solve these and that's by using pr proportions in order to find the percentage. So ratios you're really good at. All we're doing now is taking the percent and writing them as ratios. So a percent is a ratio in which the total is always 100. And we know that because every single percent written as a fraction is over 100. So this should be a fairly obvious, um, an obvious thing to understand. So this is the first little example there. 30% of the lunchtime customers ordered salad. If 21 customers did not order salad, how many customers were there? So I made a little box. You don't necessarily have to draw a table, but you do need to have two columns. This first column represents our percents. This second column represents the actual number. So what we have here is salad, not salad, and total. And they said that 30% ordered a salad, so I put 30 with salad, which makes sense that 70 would be not salad because 30 plus 70 is 100%. And then I put the 21 with the not salad, because that's what they said. 21 customers did not order a salad. So they want to know how many total customers there were. So can you see here the ratio we can pull out? We don't really need the salad people. We just need the total number of customers. So I put not salad over total, 70 over 100 equals 21 over T. And that is where we will cross multiply, which we're really good at. And then divide by 70. You don't need a calculator for this. 21 divided by 7 is 3, and then just add the 0. So there were 30 customers in total that came. So obviously now we can figure out there were 9 people who ordered a salad, but you don't really need that information. They just want to know how many customers there were. So we use our percent to find our answer. Let's do the examples. Example 1 and example 2. It says here that 40% of students do not buy lunch, and there are 480 students that do buy their lunch, so how many do not? They gave us the percentages, so 40% don't, that means 60% do. And so I, I picked buy, don't, and total, which makes sense. And so I put 480 with the buy, and they want to know how many don't buy. So I just pull out that little ratio. I put D for don't, it doesn't really matter if you use X, Y, L, whatever you want. So in this situation, I didn't even cross multiply because I can see the relationship. Because 6 times 8 is 48, so 60 times 8 is 480. So I just times 8 times 8. If you don't see that relationship, you can just cross multiply, no problem. So 40 times 8 is 320, and 320 people do not buy lunch. And then of course you can find the total from there, but you don't really need to. So number two says 260 out of 300 people do not carpool. So I put here carpool, don't carpool, and total, right? So this is the percent side. They didn't give me any percent information. So all I know is the total percent is 100 because it's always 100, right? So I put the 100 there. And then I went over to the actual number side. And it said 260 out of 300 don't carpool. They didn't tell me how many did. They said don't and total. 261 and 300 total. So they want to know what percent do carpool. Okay, well there's a couple ways we can do it. We can find the percent that don't carpool and then subtract to get the percent that do. That's actually kind of what I want to do. So I'm just going to use these numbers. X over total equals 261 over 300. Just remember, they're not asking what percent don't. We're just using that to find what do. Okay, so this is times three. Okay, but we didn't really go that direction. What we really need to do is divide by three because we're going the opposite direction. So 261 divided by three, because 300 divided by three is 100, 261 divided by three, and I did the math already, and it ends up being 87. So 87% don't carpool, which means 13% do carpool. That was some quick subtraction in my head. And so it asked the little question, does this reflect the, st the statistic that 13% carpool? And it does, because literally 13% carpool when you do the math. 87 don't, 13% do. So let's see that. 
is that second example. So you really need to be careful, what are they really asking for? Because sometimes we can solve and just give an answer and not really give the correct answer. Example three, the students have a spelling test with 40 words. You thought my tests were bad. Six of the words have four syllables. The rest have less than four. What percent have less than four? So six have four syllables. Well, first of all, they didn't give us any percentages, so I just put the hundred. I always put the percent first. I don't know, it's just a habit. As long as you have them correct, it doesn't matter if you put the actual numbers on the left or the percent on the right. I just always do it this way, creature of habit. Okay, so six, six words have, more, have four syllables. So if there's 40 total, that means 34 have less than four. And that's just something I did in my head. Hopefully you can too. What percent have less than four? So we don't want to know how many have four. We want to know the percent that has less than four. So we have X over 100 equals 34 over 40. So what we can do is cross multiply. And Ke'ihila, you're probably 12 steps ahead of me because you're good at this. Okay, so I've already got rid of the zero because it's easier that way. And so 340 divided by four. And we end up with 85. So that means 85% of the words have less than four syllables. And that makes sense because most of the words have less than four. So I think that's the last one. Just make sure you have a percent column and then an actual column and then pick out the little, um, pick out the ratio that you need in order to find what you need. Have a good day.